If you have to go to these kind of lengths to find someone, I would wonder whether they want you to find them. Hi everyone, Nemo here. On the 12th of January 2023, the Utah Area Presidency released a training video on finding lost members. We'll get into why the word lost is problematic later, but for now, let's roll the tape. Sisters and brothers, we are so grateful to represent the Utah Area Presidency for this important training. I am Jeffrey Anderson, and I work as the Director of the Membership and Statistical Records, a division within the Finance and Records Department of the Church. Those who will be presenting with me include Greg Page, our Senior Manager of All Membership Application Products, and Brittany Roskelly, our Senior Manager of Membership Reporting and Analytics. Doesn't this all just sound very corporate? And at this point, I also want to mention that it is not new. Finding lost sheep programs and lost sheep files have existed for a long time, often as a result of the church's unscrupulous baptism practices like baseball baptism programs. These create members of the church who are never heard from again. The Lord has made clear our responsibility to minister to all his children, including those who stray or choose not to participate in the church for a time. Let's get into the language here. It rubbed me the wrong way when I first heard it, but it took me a while to work out exactly why. The phrases in question, those who stray or choose not to participate in the church for a time. Stray implies that those that leave weren't holding tightly enough to the iron rod. They weren't committed or hardworking enough, and so subsequently strayed away and wandered off from the church. While many who leave don't make a big public declaration, I don't think many just stray from such a demanding religion. If you are someone who just strayed from the LDS church, please let me know. Choose not to participate in the church for a time strikes me as denial on the part of the church. That they cannot accept people would leave permanently, and so must caveat this with, for a time. The implication being that they will eventually come back. To learn if we might become more effective in our finding and research endeavors for those who are lost, a Finding Lost member pilot was conducted beginning in September 2020 in specified coordinating councils throughout the world, including four Utah area coordinating councils. These pilots were authorized by the First Presidency. This is important because any of the tactics or such outlined in this training were authorized by the most senior leaders of the church. The Quorum of the Twelve and First Presidency have responsibility for what happens when the church begins to enact these practices. Elders Quorum and Relief Society presidencies were asked to work together in finding lost members. They had the option to request help from other ward council members or missionaries. Area 70s were asked to oversee progress of the finding lost members work. Some of the key things learned from the pilot include Elders Quorum and Relief Society presidencies working together had greater success than other finding models, for example, clerks alone doing the finding. Involvement from friends, previous leaders, or longtime members of the unit increased the probability of finding. While many found expressed a desire not to be contacted, many also re-established relationships with the church and its members. Units who approached the effort prayerfully, rather than merely as a task, were the most successful in finding and ministering to lost members. Approval has now been given to implement this program throughout the world, including in the Utah area, as recently instructed by the Utah Area Presidency in a letter to stake presidents. I will now turn the time over to Greg Page. Just before he turns the time over to Greg Page, who, need I remind you, is our Senior Manager of All Membership Application Products. He tells us the teamwork of Elders Quorum Presidents and Relief Society Presidents is more effective than other methods, such as only the clerk doing the finding. And what are those other methods, I hear you ask? Well, first, a big shout out to Priesthood Dispatches for helping me track this down. I knew these instructions existed and I could visualize them in my mind, but Priesthood Dispatches helped me actually find them. If you're trying to find a member in the UK, go to the church's tech wiki, and here are the resources available for clerks, including a list of websites that can be used to find members, electoral roll, address lookup websites, that sort of thing. And the American section was much worse. Just look at all this. Look at the lengths that some clerks could go to just to find someone. If you have to go to these kind of lengths to find someone, 
I would wonder whether they want you to find them. Now, the website does contain a disclaimer that content found in this wiki may not always reflect official church information, but this information was clearly used by Ward Clarks in trying to find people and was hosted on an official church website, where it thankfully no longer resides. Many people are asking, at what point does this attempt to find someone who may be a complete stranger to you cross lines into harassment or stalking? A violation of an individual's privacy in pursuit of bringing them back to a church congregation they have thus far declined to attend. Let me know what you think in the comments. On February 1st, 2023, the records of converts who were baptized and confirmed within the last 10 years and are now in the address unknown file at church headquarters will be sent back to the last known ward and placed in a new Finding Lost Members report accessed within Leader and Clerk Resources, or LCR. Records listed in the Finding Lost Members Report will not be included in any ward, branch, stake, or district statistics, reports, or class roles. When the new location of a member is found, the clerk moves the record to the appropriate ward or branch. If a member's location cannot be found after following a simplified set of research steps, the clerk can return the record to church headquarters. After being returned to church headquarters, the record will be flagged to prevent it from being sent back to the same unit unless specifically requested by unit leaders. So church headquarters are going to dump all the address unknown members who converted within the past 10 years back into the last known ward. To stop this artificially boosting ward figures, they won't be counted in statistics, although it's unclear whether these names are counted in the church's overall membership stats. If they were, but aren't any more when they're moved back to the ward, then it is likely this will reduce the church's total membership figure and make the overall church statistics more accurate, as the people whose names are in address unknown by and large no longer attend church and may have tried to make a soft exit from the church. However, what is more likely is they are still very much counted to maintain the illusion of a church with a large global membership. But now I want to know what these simplified steps are to find people's addresses. People who have most likely actively chosen not to give their address to the church. The specified research steps outlined in the Finding Lost Members report include the following. Seek to communicate with a member using phone, email, social media, channels, or other resources available in your area or community. This is the only acceptable step, but even then, it's worrying that he has to list so many different ways a person may be contactable. If this person desires a relationship with the church, surely they will be contactable simply by someone in the ward. It's even worse if this person is requested not to be contacted. Contact known family or friends of the member. Don't do that. Contact the occupant of the member's last known address. Don't do that. If these efforts are not successful, obtain the bishop's approval to return the record to church headquarters. If someone doesn't want you to know where they live, then don't go to their last known address to see if the person there knows where they went. I'm glad this seems to be the full list, because as you've seen, it used to be worse. I have the opportunity to review the dashboard the area presidency and area 70s have access to for the Finding Lost Members effort. There was an overview and reference guide that was sent out this week to the Area 70s in an email. The dashboard includes information about the number of individual records moved by church headquarters to the local units, the number of individuals found through research and moved to a new unit by the clerk, or who were found and moved by the clerk back into the researching unit's regular membership list. The number of individuals researched and then moved back to the church headquarters address and known unit. In this example, for the Bountiful Coordinating Council, a total of 11% of the members have been found. For this example, the Bountiful East Stake is being selected. The Bountiful East Stake, through the finding efforts, have found 8% of the members and have returned 71% of the members back to address unknown. 
Brittany Roskelly's part of the presentation was training on the MLS dashboard and how local leaders can access the statistics. However, it does give us a look into the success of the program. In the example she gave from the pilot, they are only finding less than 20%. This reactivation program will be rolled out from the 1st of February. This is a concerted effort to try and stem the flow of members who are just quietly trying to fade away. They want to leave, they don't want the church to know where they are, but they don't want their records removing officially for a variety of reasons. But what we learn from this video is that you really do need to remove your name from the records of the church if you want to stop them coming after you. Because as so many online have said, it seems you can leave the church but the church can't leave you alone.